Before we get into this review, I got a joke for you. Knock, knock. Who's there? Intro. Intro who? Joker. Folie à deux. So Joker, folie à deux. This is the sequel to the 2019 Joker movie. It's directed by the same director of the first movie, Todd Phillips. So in this sequel, it takes place two years after the events of the first one. Arthur Fleck, aka Joker, has been in jail for two years, and the time has come for him to be put on trial. A fellow inmate named Lee, short for Harley, Quinzel, comes into his life. The two of them get together, they form a relationship, and they're gonna see what they can do about this trial. Oh, and also, there are songs. There are musical numbers in this movie, too. And let them mayhem begin. Now, this movie's been getting all sorts of bad reviews. I didn't love it. That being said, I didn't hate it as much as everyone else does. Joaquin Phoenix, he gives it his all here, as he usually does in every movie he's in. I mean, come on, last time he played this character, he won the Oscar for it. He's a master of his craft and at playing this version of the Joker. And what he's going through in this movie, I do understand, I do. He's not the weak point of this movie, but I will say he's not as strong as Lady Gaga as Lee Quinzel, whose character is known in most DC lore as Harley Quinn. Because yeah, I'll tell you now, the character of Harley Quinn, who I am a huge fan of in DC, I see this version of that character as kind of an homage to that character, without actually being that character. Her origin story is completely different than the one that's been established, which I could argue as a fanboy, be like, why did they change it? Could have been fine, maybe even better if they just left it as it was. But I get that they want to tell a different story here. Whether that story is any good, I'll get to that. But the fact that they made that change, I mean, that shit happens all the time in comic book movies. Characters are changed for one reason or another. So I'll be honest, the fact that they changed her origin story, it didn't bother me in this movie, which actually kind of surprises me because I thought it would. But did Lady Gaga embody the character of Harley Quinn? I mean, for this story, I guess. Look, I know this is supposed to be like a realistic version of these characters, so Harley's not gonna be all, you know, nuts and doing flips, speaking with a high-pitched Brooklyn accent. We all know this going in. So I will say yes, for this version of the story, I guess, yeah, she is Harley Quinn, kind of. She's Lee Quinzel. In the same kind of way that Joseph Gordon-Levitt was Robin in The Dark Knight Rises. Kind of an homage to that character from DC lore. That's how I choose to see it anyway. And I thought that Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga had really good chemistry on screen. This mad love that they have, you can see this is kind of what Arthur Fleck thought he had with Zazzy Beetz's character in the first movie, but now it's actually being reciprocated, he's gonna be pretty happy about it. For what it was worth, I enjoyed watching the two of them interacting. I found it interesting. Getting into it though, there are things I liked about this movie, I'll be honest, and there are of course things I did not like. I did like the fact that this is a court movie for at least half of it. I mean, because it makes sense. It's what would happen after the events of the first movie. He committed a crime, a few crimes, and he's in jail. Now there's gonna be a big trial, a court case. Yeah. That's what happens, right? Granted, I'm no law expert. I don't know really a whole lot about that world, admittedly. But the fact that this movie is pretty much the aftermath or epilogue of the first one, I felt that was a natural step to take for the sequel because it just makes sense, at least to me. Then again, certain events that transpire throughout the course of this movie's plot, I was like, eh, I don't know if I like that the story made that decision. I don't want to go into too much detail here because I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, there are a couple of things that, I don't want to say they retcon the first movie, but it does kind of backtrack and make you go, well, wait a minute. No, the first movie said otherwise, now I'm kind of second guessing myself. And I've heard the chatter online about how this is a sequel that hates its predecessor. I don't know about that, but in a couple of cases, it does feel like it backtracks a little bit. It's like Arthur Fleck is second guessing his choices that he made in the first one. And it does feel a little weird. Now let's talk about IMAX. Let's take a second and talk about aspect ratios. There are a couple of different kinds of IMAX aspect ratios. There's 190 to one, which is the usual IMAX aspect ratio for most theaters. And then there's 140 3 to 1, which I call true IMAX. Think Zack Snyder's Justice League. It adds even more to the top and bottom, and there are only a certain amount of movie theaters around the world that showcase this kind of true IMAX on their screens. A good chunk of this movie was shot in 143 to 1, and I saw this movie in a theater that showcased that, and I'll tell you, no matter what this movie's flaws, I thought it was pretty awesome to see. It's so immersive, you have no idea. Granted, I know tickets for that can be pretty expensive. That's why I'm an AMC A-list subscriber. But if ever you get a chance to see a movie in 143 to one aspect ratio, I suggest you take it. Cause it really is unlike anything you've ever seen. You're never gonna get that at home. The scenes in this movie that were 143 to one were mostly the musical numbers. And now here's where I'm gonna get into that. This movie is a musical, it's a jukebox musical, meaning it uses songs that already exist. Did it need to be a musical though? That is the question. The answer, 
And this is coming from someone who loves musicals. In case you didn't already know, Wicked Part 1 is my most anticipated movie of the year. But for this movie, I didn't really see any good reason that it should have been a musical. I mean, yeah, Lady Gaga and there is music and there is kind of a reason. Lady Gaga is a great pick for a Harley Quinn-ish type character. And hell, Harley Quinn has sang in other DC lore before. But the musical numbers did kind of feel out of place in this movie. I really can't deny that. They were fun to watch, oh yeah, for sure. They looked awesome. Like a lot of love and care went into the crafting of said sequence. Sequences, but for the most part, I didn't feel like they needed to be in the movie. A couple of them though, I was like, yeah, I get it. It was strange. And as I was watching the movie, I was thinking to myself, maybe the two worlds are better kept separate. Those worlds being comic book movies and musical movies. Maybe they were just never meant to merge. Or if they are, it should feel more cohesive. In this case, it just didn't. That being said, the music was really good in this movie. The score, once again, composed by Hildur Gunadotter. It is that same kind of zizzy cello from the first movie and it's awesome still. In fact, that score pretty much didn't change at all for this one. It sounds almost exactly the same. Not complaining since it's so good. I'm just saying. And the songs for the musical numbers themselves. I mean, they're good songs. What can I say? They're classics. Which, side note, I was listening to that new Lady Gaga Harlequin album on the way home. Oh my god, I love it. It's awesome. Give it a listen when you get the chance. In fact, I feel like this album was the best thing to come out of the movie. There's kind of a sad irony to that, but that's life sometimes. In the end, there are things I liked about Joker Folea Do. I want to give it its due credit. The acting was great all around, as was the on-screen chemistry between Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. They were great together. I like the concept of the premise, but the execution did leave some things to be desired. The musical numbers didn't really seem to fit. Certain story decisions that were made that I don't want to get into, because spoilers. But yeah, including the ending, which I hate. I was honestly gonna give this movie my matinee rating, but upon further reflection and listening to what I've been saying for the past few minutes, I gotta bust it down. So for Joker, for Lea De, I will say, Wait until you can watch this movie online. It sucks because there was a time when this was one of my most anticipated movies of 2024. Oh well, can't win them all I guess. So Joker, for Lea De, have you seen it yet? What are your thoughts on it? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Peace!